On today's primetime local news, how the pandemic and inflation have affected the current state of the local real estate market. And renovations to the BioClean Aquatic Center have been pushed back a year due to rising costs. And what we've seen now with the pool is that B, there's more work to be done than originally budgeted for. Congratulations to the 2022 Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champions. Plus, the Lloydminster female U13 Blazers have been named this year's Good Deeds Cup champion. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Throughout the pandemic, the real estate market has fluctuated between a seller's and buyer's market. And with inflation rising, the market is set to change once again. Buying a home during the pandemic has had its ups and downs with changes in real estate. However, the market is beginning to shift towards a balance. What we're starting to see in our local real estate board area is the trend moving towards a balanced market. Over the past several years, we've been more in a buyer's market, and that trend is starting to definitely shift, and we've seen that more so in the past few weeks. Currently, inflation is at a high across the country, which made the Bank of Canada raise their benchmark interest rate to 1%. McIsaac says this will affect how buyers purchase homes going forward. I think what the effect is that we're seeing is that the buyers are thinking maybe we better get the homes that we're interested in. Maybe we better consider starting to purchase a home now because of obviously with the price of inflation, you'll have increased interest rates as well. So being able to get into that home at a current interest rate is going to be of importance to them. Throughout the pandemic, home builders have been affected by supply chain issues across multiple industries that, combined with inflation, are hiking prices for buyers. The ability to be able to have the spec homes come up like we normally see with the builders and that is costing them more money to build those homes and that's going to translate in higher new home costs as well as it's going to drive the rate up for the homes that are our resale homes. McIsaac says another factor in the market is the current housing shortage. The city is looking to give the BioClean Aquatic Center a facelift, but a new feasibility study brought new issues to light. As Jace Mackey reports, the upgrades have now been pushed back a year. The BioClean Aquatic Center has been a recreation destination for over 30 years but the elements have worn on the building's exterior cedar siding, leading to deterioration. In the most recent budget, the city set aside $500,000 for an exterior renovation. The city then hired an Edmonton-based architecture firm to review the building's envelope and provide a feasibility study. And what we've seen now with the pool is that, B, there's more work to be done than originally budgeted for, and it costs the materials about 50%. The study estimates cost to replace the exterior stucco and cedar with steel cladding has increased, but that's not all. A review of the building's below-ground insulation found it to be badly degraded and needing replacement. The report also recommended replacing all windows and doors to increase energy efficiency. With those two factors, all of a sudden we ran past the contingency that would have been built into a budget that was put forward. The total estimate for the project came in at just over $1.6 million. A three-foot by three-foot trench would need to be dug around the entire building in order to replace the installation. The increased cost and size of the project has led administration to recommend delaying the renovation until 2023. The delay would give the city time to plan for a longer shutdown to try and limit the impact the project has on users of the pool. The city staff have also started looking for sustainability grants to help cover a portion of the project costs. They're now looking for grants because what we're proposing on doing is changing the building envelope, which is the outside exterior. Once you do that, there's now what we go into retrofit. Windows, doors and things like that. There's opportunity to apply to federal grant money under the green programs. While the city has no current plans to build a new pool in Lloydminster, they plan to complete these upgrades next year so that the BioClean Aquatic Centre serves the community well into the future. From the overall perspective, it's in good shape. It was identified, yes, we've got some other issues that we didn't see, but once those are rectified, I believe that building will have 20, 25 years lifespan, give or take. 
For Primetime Local News, I'm Jay Smackey. It's time now for this week's edition of Retrospect. Here's Blake Nate. This week in retrospect, a local student gives the smackdown to the competition at the National Wrestling Championship in 92. He has won three national and seven provincial titles. His record is one of the best in the nation, and he is considered a giant in Canadian wrestling circles. He is Robbie Woods. Woods at 5 foot 4 and 100 pounds is anything but a giant, but once he hits the wrestling mat, he becomes a giant of a competitor. Woods is back home and back training after just notching up his third national crown in London, Ontario. The first one was really easy. I pinned him in 43 seconds, and then the second one was a guy I knew. Uh, hadn't wrestled him before, but he, I knew he was pretty good. It went 2 minutes and 10 seconds. It was a fairly tough match, but I pinned him. And then in the final, I was losing 4 nothing, and then I came back slowly and won 8-4. Woods' climb to the top is even more remarkable considering his wrestling coach is basically himself. Since coming to Lloydminster from Eston two years ago, Woods is a one-man wrestling team. And it's cold as we take a trip back to 97, so I'll pack a sweater. It's sheer insanity as local producers catch on to a new trend in the prairies. It's beginning to be a real industry. Alpacas are becoming a popular choice of livestock for Midwest producers. Tellier says they're no longer one of few families raising what they call the world's greatest livestock investment. There's a few alpaca breeders in the Lloydminster area now, and there's one around Kit Scotty, and there's us up here in Bonneville, so it's beginning to be a, a group of people instead of us out here in Bonneville that the closest ones were us near Edmonton. The new producers are part of the reason the Telliers are holding an information seminar this weekend. It was originally planned as a way to educate the people they've sold alpacas to in the past year. Tellier says they prepared those buyers for the winter and now it's time to help them out with the things that need to be done at this time of year. Now they need to learn about shearing, they need to learn about getting ready for the babies that are going to be coming on the ground in the next few months. About 50 people from as far away as Calgary are planning to come for the seminar, and shearing will be a big part of what they learn. And that's all for this week in Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by Webb's Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford in Vermilion. And now for a look at your Easter Monday weather, we go to Shelby Clark. So much to Jasmine. Yes, taking a first look at your weather forecast for your Easter Monday. We are seeing a beautiful day to start off the week, although we will be cooling down just a little bit. I hopefully everybody's enjoying their day today. With seven degrees right now, with a little mix of some sun and cloud, we did see a lot more sunny over day today. So really good to start off the week, and we are seeing a slight wind chill, but it's not too bad whatsoever. So hopefully everybody's enjoying their day and had a great Easter long weekend. I know I did, but now we're back to reality. Now switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan, we are seeing those plus temperatures now, even though we were seeing those minuses last week. Now we have warmed up quite a bit, even some spots seeing 10 degrees, uh, especially in Edmonton and Vagreville. Most other spots are seeing 9 degrees on this side for Alberta side here. Marwayne and Bonneville are both at 8 degrees, while the 7 in both St. Paul and Lac La Biche and Cold Lake is just at 6. Now switching over to our Saskatchewan side, here they are seeing those plus temperatures as well. Kind of matching with us up here in the Alberta side, uh, except for up in Isle Cross, they're seeing slightly cooler, just hitting 2 degrees. Uh, 7 in Pierceland and down in Maidstone, like us here in the border city. Uh, 5 in Meadow Lake, while it's 6 degrees in Green Lake and St. Walberg. And down in North Battleford and Macklin, they are seeing the warmest around 8 and 9 degrees. And for North Battleford here, they will be cooling down to minus 2 for their evening low, so not too bad whatsoever. They are still seeing those single digits for the minus points so won't be too uh, cool when they go into the evening and throughout the night then tomorrow morning they will be starting off with a slight chance of some snowfall to start off their day but they will be seeing three degrees so they will still be seeing a slightly warmer day 
Now switching over to Cool Lake, they'll be cooling down to minus one, so not too bad either from what they are sitting at six degrees. They will be seeing those flurries start up in their morning, but they will be seeing five degrees, so hopefully that light snowfall will be melting throughout the day later on in the evening tomorrow. And for us in the border city, we'll be cooling down to minus one, so we will be seeing a pretty beautiful evening. So I'd say take advantage, go out there, take a nice walk, a stroll, hit up Bud Miller Park. Then tomorrow we will be seeing three degrees, and we will be seeing around a 60% uh, chance of some flurries to start it off. So hopefully we won't be seeing too much snowfall. And now looking at your three-day forecast, we will be seeing that snowfall continue on tomorrow and into Wednesday, but we will be seeing a mix of some sun and cloud. Then Thursday will warm up even to five degrees. That's the first look at your weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. The theme for this year's Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup was to shift, change, and make hockey more inclusive. One Lloyd Minster team had the idea to make a fully wheelchair and para hockey accessible rink. Evan Kelly tells us that idea is now a reality. Congratulations to the 2022 Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champions! Players, coaches, and fans of the Lloydminster U13 Female Blazers were surprised Friday as the team was announced 2022 Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champions. Uh, I thought they were going to tell us that we were top three again, but then I realized that it said champions and there's the cup there and then it was like... Crazy. Also on site were members of Inclusion Lloyd Minster, Chevrolet Canada, and Good Deeds Cup ambassadors. What I love about this program is it really builds the leaders of tomorrow. Through their action, they realize that it doesn't matter that they're 11, 12 years old, they can really have an impact in their community. I think it sets a standard for the rest of the country. Um, this is a, a need that, that we need to see implemented nationwide, um, and, and I think they've shown exceptional leadership in, in starting that. The Blazers are the first all-female team to win the Good Deeds Cup and the first champions from Alberta or Saskatchewan. Yeah, I mean, personally, it makes me so incredibly proud um, seeing where women's hockey has grown to be in general, but then to see them leading the way and, and making hockey more accessible for um, people with different abilities, right? It's, it's absolutely huge. The $100,000 prize will go to Inclusion Lloyd Minster. The donation will be used for a fully accessible rink at the new Lloyd Minster place. Ross Ulmer from local dealership Ulmer Chevrolet matched the grand prize with a donation to Inclusion Canada. We, like, there are no words for how excited we are. <laughs> it's been hard to hold back the emotion. It, it, it's the most amazing thing. This will inspire others to do the same in their community, and not just hockey, everywhere else. Every building someone builds makes sure it's accessible for everyone. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. It's now time to take a look at some pet pictures. It's the beginning of the week, so you have all week to submit your pictures to our Facebook page for our Pet Pad gift card giveaway on Friday. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Tara Jarvis with the Malonka Dancers and the Association is here to speak on the Lloyd Minster Ukrainian Cultural Association hosting Malonka in May on the 7th. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, thank you for having me. No, of course, no problem. We're glad we were able to have you on here and help get the word out for Malanka coming up here. It's uh, time's moving fast, so I'm glad we're able to help get the word out. Now, what can residents expect with this event for this year? Uh... Typically a Malanka um, is in January, but because of COVID, we're hosting a smaller scale version 
Um, this version here we're having in May, you'll expect, you know, your typical Ukrainian meal with your kubasa, cabbage rolls, uh, pierogies, and then uh, I think we're having cupcakes for dessert. And you'll also have a presentation of the Molonka dancers. And what are the proceeds going towards from this year's event? Uh, this is actually one of our two major fundraisers for our club. Um, this one particular fundraiser, we decided with everything going on that we would like to have a portion of the pro proceeds go towards uh, relief efforts uh, in, in Ukraine. Um, we are looking at a couple different foundations to see where the money, like the funds would be best served. Um, but we'll have a better idea once we know exactly what number we're looking at. Now, what has this event happened in the border city originally in previous years? What's usually involved in Malanka? And for people that may be unaware, what's all involved? Uh, January, a Malanka is usually a Ukrainian New Year. So we celebrate the Ukrainian New Year with some of the more traditional uh, dishes like the kutsia and the kolosh bread and um, stuff like that. And it is your typical dine and dance as well. Uh, this one here in May, we are also having a DJ, so there will be a dance and everything involved, but it's a little bit of a smaller scale, uh, smaller venue, um, less seats available, but yeah, we're hoping, we're hoping it'll be a good time. And in those previous years, I'm assuming that residents here in the border city were showing some strong support for Milanka. Absolutely. It's usually a sold out event. Absolutely. How would you say it felt to have this event still for this year, even though it had to be held in May instead of January? And why you believe it's so important to still have it to celebrate this in the border city? Uh, for me personally, um, the Ukrainian culture is alive and well in my family. And it's uh, nice to be able to share it with the rest of the community and keep, uh, keep the culture alive and keep the kids going and keep everybody involved. And lastly, I just wanna ask, we can get the main point out there for everybody watching. Where will this event be held and where can people find more information about this online just so they can check it out? Uh, you can find the information on our Facebook page under the Lloydminster Ukrainian Cultural Association. And uh, it is being held at the Rolling Green Fairways on May 7th. Uh, I would like to add that for this specific event, we are still looking for some sponsors. We are also always uh, welcoming sponsors throughout the year to keep uh, costs down for the kids to be able to dance. And uh, we do still have some tickets available for Milanka in May, but they are selling fast. So, get your calls in and get those tickets. Amazing, well, I'm really glad that we were able to help get the word out and more people will go online and help get those tickets, help put some proceeds towards all the good things that the association and the dancers are trying to do this for. And I'm really happy to know that Milanka was still able to happen for this year. So thank you so much for joining us today, Tara. For sure, thank you. <laughs> Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. I am so excited to be joined today by this lady that has just made such an impact on the musical world. Leah Marlene is with us today. Leah, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Leah, you have made such a splash on American Idol. How does it feel to be in the top 24? Like, you know, even to have made it onto the show, but now to keep going, you know, week after week, how exciting is that for you? It's really surreal. Like, like I've been living in this, in the top 24 four mindset since like December. So in like so many ways, it feels like just normal life now. And then I think about it, I'm like, what the heck is my life? Like I've watched this show for so long and uh, have really loved watching like the live show, like once it narrows down to this group of people. And I just can't believe that I'm one of them this year. It's really surreal. And it's been the most incredible experience of my entire life. Uh, I just feel so, so grateful to be here. Well, watching the judges, Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, and Lionel Richie, they clearly are fans of yours. <laughs> um, how can, can you even imagine in your life that somebody like Lionel Richie would be a fan of yours? Like, that's just crazy to think about. 
no, it's it's insane. Like Lionel is such a legend and had has had such an amazing career and is still having an amazing career uh, all these years later. And it's just such an honor to be able to share music with them like multiple times, like that they just get to like watch me grow on this show is insane to me. How much work goes on behind the scenes, Leah? Because they all make it look so smooth when we see it. But my goodness, there must be so much pre-production and so much of your time that it is taken for all these different things. And then the practicing, like when you had to do the duets, you got to work with someone else's schedule. So how crazy is it behind the scenes? It is crazy. Yeah, you don't, you, you don't even... You can't even begin to understand what all goes into it. And like I said, I've been watching the show for years. It's been like so cool to see the behind the scenes. And I've also been so shocked by like how much goes into it. Even if you just like think about filming, like you film so much that and it all gets boiled down to like a minute or two, but you don't even understand how, how many like, like probably hours of filming go into like, just like that minute or two. And then, and that's just, that's just like the filming. There's like, wardrobe and then there's song selection there's vocal coaching and then there's arrangement for the band and then there's social media and then there's interviews and then there's like there's so much that's like constantly going on and that's like just the beginning of the list um it's a lot and it's a lot to like keep your mind grounded when you're trying to keep track of like all these things and you know every round is a different like completely new slate for all those different areas that you have to like put like have your mind made up have these really big huge creative decisions like made up all the time and you just have to like be on it all the time but like it sounds really stressful and it is sometimes like I definitely have days where I'm like you know a lot more anxious but then I'm like it's just like you always got to come back ground yourself and it really is just a, way more fun than it is stressful most of the time um, and it's just an amazing experience. When it comes to the songs that you perform, Leah, do you get to choose? Uh, do you have any say in, in what you can actually perform? Or do they say, you know, here's a list and you have to pick from this list? Uh, how does that work? Yeah. Okay. So this is why American Idol is superior. <laughs> They're amazing because you have a lot of control over what you do. And, um, you know, the further you go on the show, you also have more control over like how you're portrayed as well. Um, and so uh, as far as songs go, like, as long as they can get them cleared, you can pretty much do them. Obviously, like, there will be, like, you know, the executives might be like, mm, yeah, we really don't want you to do that song. And then, okay. But, like, you still get to choose the other song that you do instead of that. So there is some pushback here and there. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you can also push back to the pushback. And um, really, the only thing that's non-negotiable is if they can't get the clearance, like, from the publishing, um, which has been a tricky thing for me recently, because we, we choose songs several rounds in advance, whether we are going to make it to those rounds or not. Um, and so I've been having, I've been, every song I've wanted to do has not been, has been, like, on the denied list, unfortunately. So that's tricky, but um, in general, like we have a lot of control over the songs and the arrangements that we do, which is so nice. Well, and obviously, Leah, you want to showcase your voice for this show. Uh, your last performance was Call Me by Blondie, which is a really yes. tough song. So are you choosing these songs because they challenge you? Uh, or do you think this is what uh, you, know, you just really enjoy the song and you, you like how it, it shows your voice or is a little bit of both? Yeah, well, the main goal in any song that I choose is I want it to sound like a song that I'd write, a song that you're going to hear like on my next album, whatever. Um, and I always want to keep people on their toes and keep people interested. And so, but it at the end of the day, like it all comes down to what is going to sound best in my voice. This is a singing competition. And so it's got, it's like those two things. It's got to feel like me through and through. I got to feel really good about it in my gut and it's got to, you know, show off the goods as well. Um, and so those are like the main like check boxes when it comes to picking songs for sure. Well, Leah, right before you started American Idol, you also had your album release and luckily yes. in your audition, they asked you to perform an original song, which was Wish Her to the Well. And I saw that you got a lot of great response. So are you still trying to work on promoting your album in the midst of all this as well? Yeah, honestly, the, the album promotion is kind of, I, I honestly haven't posted much about it recently, which I've been meaning to um, because there's so much to post about with Idol, but just naturally people uh, come to my Instagram page and they're like, in my bio, it's like, go listen to my album. So there's just been a lot of, everything on the album has been completely organic, like listens just from being on the show. And so it's been amazing because I haven't had to put, you know, my life energy into that and Idol, like Idol is definitely my focus. Uh, but the album, you know, is just an incredible foundation that I have out there for people to actually get to know my artistry outside of the show. Um, and so, 
yeah, it's just been really cool how it's all overlapped. Well, Leah, congratulations. It's just amazing to see how far you've come. And on this show, we know you are going to be the next American Idol. I just I just know <laughs> that. I'm going to say that. I'm going to call that right now. So uh, good luck with the rest of the show. And we look forward to speaking with you again sometime. Thank you so much for having me. Ending off, we'll take another quick look at your seven-day forecast. Expect to see some light snowfall here in the next two days, but that will melt down as we warm up on Thursday and Friday with a mix of some sun and cloud at that five mark. And then Saturday and Sunday, we will see some nice temperatures for our weekend with six on Saturday with a mix of some sun and cloud. Seeing a lot sunnier of a day on Sunday to end that off with nine degrees. Then we'll even be hitting those double digits starting off next week. Thank you, Shelby, and thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News this hour, and you can catch even more news in the next hour.